What's up guys, we're back with another educational video and this week we're talking about the same thing we talk about every week. No, not artificial sweeteners. Intermittent fasting, is it going to shorten your lifespan? But first, make sure you click like, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment. Oh, the algo. One of the big things I hear from intermittent fasting proponents is, well, fasting has been shown to prolong your lifespan. It's going to improve longevity. The reality is there aren't any human studies demonstrating that. And the animal studies that do are basically in rats, many of them with confounding variables. And the rodent model is not really a great model for human longevity. Primates are a much better animal model for that. One of the big reasons being that Rodents tend to grow throughout the entire course of their life. They continue to gain weight, whereas primates will go up, plateau, and then actually start to come back down at a certain point. In the primate studies, they show that just simple caloric restriction will prolong lifespan, and there's no evidence that some sort of fasting is gonna be superior to that. Really what we're left with, since you can't do a lifelong randomized control trial in humans, is examining some perspective data, and that involves things like cohorts. So there was a cohort published last year looking over a 25 year period at about 24,000 participants and their meal frequency and that association with all cause mortality and cardiovascular mortality. And they compared people who were eating one meal versus a compared group of three meals. And they found that actually the one meal per day group had significantly higher rates of all-cause mortality. When we looked at the hazard ratios for all-cause mortality of one meal per day versus three meals per day, it was a 1.3, which means there is a 30% relative risk increase in the groups that were eating one meal per day versus eating three meals per day. And when it came to cardiovascular disease mortality, it was an 80% relative risk increase in cardiovascular mortality by eating one meal per day versus three meals per day. Furthermore, people who specifically skipped breakfast also had a 40% increase in the risk of cardiovascular disease mortality. Now, it's important to make some caveats here. The first one is this is assessing correlation, although it's strong correlation data because each person is their own control over this period of time, we cannot move out the idea of confounding variables. But one good thing about this study was across these different meal frequencies, there was no difference in BMI. And BMI can be a large predictor of mortality. So it doesn't appear like one group was necessarily becoming more obese or had more body fat than another group. So that's good that it was apparently relatively the same across meal frequencies when it came to BMI. Another caveat I wanna put in is these are relative risk increases. So let's say your risk for something is an absolute risk of 10%, and you get a relative risk increase of 30%. That doesn't mean it goes to 40%, 10% plus 30. What it means is it goes from 10% to 13%. It is a large relative risk increase but it's not an absolute risk increase. So that's something to keep in mind. What do I take away from this data? I don't think that this study on its own is enough to say intermittent fasting is gonna make you live shorter. There's a lot of caveats, there's a lot of different forms of intermittent fasting. This was only comparing one meal per day versus three meals per day. That being said, it's really difficult to argue that intermittent fasting is going to extend lifespan when one of the only studies we have looking at one meal per day versus multiple meals per day actually shows the exact opposite. So I'm not ready to say that intermittent fasting is dangerous or it's going to shorten your lifespan, but it is important to note that of the human perspective studies that we have so far, this one shows a relatively strong negative influence on the risk of all-cause mortality and cardiovascular disease mortality. There may be some critics of this study uh, that wanna pick it apart, and that's fine. There's certainly limitations to this study. But what I would suggest to you, if you wanna get up in arms about the relative risk increase of consuming artificial sweeteners with cardiovascular disease or all-cause mortality, the relative risk increase in this study is about three to four times that that you see of the relative risk increase from consuming artificial sweeteners. So if you're someone who's very negative on artificial sweeteners, 
based on similar kinds of prospective cohort studies, then I would suggest you should be absolutely losing your freaking mind about this study and telling everyone to definitely eat three meals per day and not one. But those of you out there who are very anti-artificial sweetener or anti-whatever, when you're pushing a narrative like someone say, oh, Paul Saladino, I very much fully expect that you will completely ignore this data and continue to push your agenda for whatever it is you like versus don't like. Again, at the end of the day, I'm not saying that this study is clear evidence that intermittent fasting or one meal per day is going to shorten your lifespan. I would be very, very surprised if it actually was a cause and effect, but it certainly does not support the idea that intermittent fasting or one meal per day is gonna somehow prolong your life. All right, guys, if you like these sorts of videos, make sure you subscribe to my research review reps. Every month, we look at five studies like this one in nutrition and exercise, and we break them down in a way that's palatable and easy for you to understand with practical takeaways about what the study actually means for you and how you might modify your nutrition or exercise to accommodate for the results of the study. We also put it in context with the overall body of evidence and we will tell you whether or not we agree or disagree with the researchers conclusions based on their own results and the way they tested things. All right guys, hope you have a great week. Make sure you like, subscribe, all that good stuff and I'll catch you next time.